Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's Real Talk interview. And tonight, we have a very special guest with us. Tonight, we are interviewing the creator of None Piece, Soul Whatever, and Code Mint. Yes, that's right, folks. We are talking to Purple Eyes, WTF, or Perps, or Nick, or, you know, just whatever you like to be called. But, uh, Nick, I want to I want to thank you for hopping onto the show with us tonight, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're, uh, you're very welcome. Um, and... For those of you guys out there, uh, Nick is a really big, he's really big into the abridging community, and I know there's a lot of people out there, but first thing that I want to ask is, how's your week been going? Hey, thank you. You're probably the first to ask that. Um, actually, pretty good. Pretty calm, pretty nice. I just beat Resident Evil 7. That was a video game that came out recently. Ooh. Now, I've heard, a lot of good, I've heard a lot of good things about that game. I've heard a lot of good things about Resident Evil 7. Yes. Oh my God. I love it. Um, just, it, it's really akin to the first Resident Evil very much. So just like switch the, pers uh, the perspective and you got it. That's Resident Evil seven in a nutshell. It's first person, but Resident Evil one esque. I don't know the word for it. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I've heard a lot of good reviews about it. And it's a game that I actually do want to go pick up, but, uh, purple eyes. What I want to talk to you tonight is there's people that listen to our podcast, uh, real talk radio who are very interested in the, in the, uh, art of voice acting. And I just kind of want to start out what sort of got you into wanting to abridge different series. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, me particular, I remember, you know what? I, I always try to remember this. I remember the first time I saw a, a series I wanted to fan dub quote unquote, um, and it was Code Geass. I remember that was kind of big around the time I was in college, but not not big like like everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. It's kind of this niche market of people that were like looking at it. So I remember seeing that and being I don't know what drew. Oh, I knew know what drew it to me. It was um, way before you know when they do these top ten lists now. You know top ten reasons why blah blah blah. Top ten. Yeah, you know like Star Attack and everything. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that wasn't that big when back in the day, like, I think it was, I started 2007 or 2008. And I remember there was something on the adult swim website that was the top 10 most ridiculous WTF moments of this show called code Geass. And like, you know, me just being a compulsive, like, you know, internet surfer, I clicked on that. I went through and I think it was like the, the third or fourth one down was like this girl humps a table after that, I was sold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, anime has... Let's, let's just be honest real quick. Anime has some of the weirdest shit you'll ever see. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed there. Oh, my God. It's, it's bad. It's sad because they have some really great storytelling stuff there, too. You know, they've got, like, all great things in that community. But the problem is, like, there is so much weird shit that they get bogged down by. <laughs> they can't kind of escape the tentacle monsters, you know what I mean? Oh my God! You know, and I actually saw a while back where the whole tentacle monsters thing came from, and it's, it's, it, it gave me nightmares for a little bit. It gave me some nightmares for for a little bit. But so you you started bridging things like Code Geass, and then you did Soul Eater, and then you did this one series. Uh, I think it's called One Piece or something like that. <laughs> um, very interesting, none none piece, which I absolutely love. That by the way, just to be honest oh, with you. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh God. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, probably not. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm fine. It's been a Do long we need day. to call an ambulance? <laughs> no, no, no. I literally like for the past two nights in a row just to beat Resident Evil Seven. I was not sleeping, so that, I probably came down with something just because of that. <laughs> I must devote my life to beating this game. I know. It was horrible. I'm like, oh, this is really good. The second I figured out it was just like the first one, it became like second nature. And I just like, you'd think I'd whiz through it, but I took my time and enjoyed it. So, yeah, maybe too much. So I was up way late, late last night. <laughs> uh, what was the question? What were we talking about? <laughs> Sorry, we got a bit off track there for a little bit, but I was wanting to talk to you about uh, when you abridge series such as like One Piece, um, Code Geass, and also Soul Eater, what there's a lot of there's a lot of editing that goes on there, and I'm just curious, how long does it usually take to say make one episode in, in a of a uh, abridged series? You know, it's funny if I'm dedicated, and I know there's guys who spend much more time doing this than I do, but like if I if I'm dedicated enough, and I'm like, you know what, this doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect, perfect. I could probably 
bang it out within like 50 hours of editing. That's just editing though. It's just editing. It's not like, you know, getting the voices and the sound effects. Oh, hunting down sound effects is like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I think what do you whenever you download sound sound effects, do you just basically take stuff off of YouTube or is there like a specific website that you go to or it's where where would you recommend people to go to for doing stuff like that? I, I used to like back in its infancy, I would be like, I'll oh, just take this from YouTube. This will be fine. Uh, I, See, I don't even know if I'm legally allowed to say that. <laughs> I, it, back in the day, let's pretend allegedly I did that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm much more smart about it now. I'm much more like, you know, what is is this public domain? Is this not? Is this? I don't want to step on anyone's toes because I can, I can tell. I have so much more appreciation for the guys that actually do that now. Like they're in the trenches, like really, like sitting there, and they find a. They need like the guys who do those sound effects they need like footsteps let's say they have to go out buy a pair of like wooden shoes from sweden and then like you know they got to be like very specific and then they got to like get the right microphone and the right mixer and they got to like you know tap 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 on this i don't know like different surfaces so just all that like putting all that effort and energy into a sound effect and then having a jerk steal it from you <laughs> like me i mean you're like son of a bitch i put 20 hours into that thing <laughs> you could steal my stuff like i don't i don't give a shit i love it when people do that. i gotta take it i'm not really the most <laughs> it's like you see that? that's something that i made <laughs> yeah. yeah i like that i like that i like seeing it show up there and be like oh it's probably like the wilhelm scream at this point like you'd be like oh hey that's cool it's there but um i, I recognize that like you know some people that they want to get money for like what they're doing and they have production companies so i'm like i'm not gonna steal from a guy that's like you know trying to make that their living you know <laughs> Yeah, because that's kind of a little bit of a, uh, I would imagine that's a little bit of a copyright issue. And not only that, they're not making anything thing off that or even getting yeah. credited for it. Yeah, well, which sucks. So, and the other thing I've been, I've been trying to do good with was trying to credit for everything. So your, your question was where to go get websites. Just search um, public domain. That's the easiest. Search uh, license free. No, what is it? It's not license free. Oh, God. Royalty free. Royalty free. Royalty free means like you don't got to pay royalties to use it. It's just it's there. And depending on they'll have like they'll have little sidebars about like how to use it, like what capacity you can use it in. If it's just YouTube or broadcasting, broadcasting means like, you know, television and whatnot, and like radio. So they'll have the rules listed there normally most of the time. As for a specific website, I don't know. I'm all over the place. Yeah. And the reason why I was kind of asking that question is because. See, I'm a uh, mass communications major, and so, like, I do, like, class projects where I make, like, fake advertisements or whatever, but, and I need to, like, you know, find places to download sound effects and everything, but uh, it's it's kind of nice to know that we do have specific websites out there that you can sort of rip that stuff off of, and, and so, but uh, my next question for you is, we were talking about, you know, just voicing a minute ago, I got I, I was watching a video last night where you were at Alcon of 2014 and I I absolutely loved the story behind how you came up with the Luffy voice. <laughs> Would you mind sharing that with us? <laughs> See if I can remember it. By the way, for those who don't know, Alcon is in London. And this is going to be I'm sorry, we're going to go off on a tangent. Is that okay? Just a short Oh, that's one? fine, dude. Just cool. say whatever you want to say. Cool, cool. Um yeah, Alcon is this place in London and I was in this weird spot in my life where I was like, I just, I just got to go do something weird. I just got to do something. I was that like, you know, rebellious teenage phase, I guess. I don't even know if I was a teenager then. I don't think I was. Maybe I was like just left teenage. I was 20. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> well, the chronology of this is horrible. I should be able to figure it out. 2014. Oh, well, whatever. A long time ago <laughs> in the year of 2014, <laughs> Purple Eyes, WTF. Headed to Alcon 2014. <laughs> yeah, um, it was it was such a trip. We I went to England and because there was this other guy in the in the abridged community, and I say that like it's a thing now. It's pretty much been disbanded. <laughs> but um, it was it was this guy who uh, I still love him to death to this day. His name is uh, Thomas. Uh, I guess his his online name is X the Dark One, and um, he was like, "Why don't you just come?" And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Like, you know, no thought. No, like, oh, maybe I need to get, like, a plane ticket. This is going to cost money. I have to figure out, like, hotel accommodations. None of that. I was just like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Uh, 
And I got there and I remember I landed. I was oh, coming back was a nightmare, but I landed everything. I had to do two flights. I was in Jersey, um, got off the plane. I was like, I felt like a little out of place, but like England's pretty warm and accommodating. Once you get past the Homeland Security, I don't know what they call oh my it over God. there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go off on a bit of a uh, tangent with this as well, because yeah, yeah. funny, f- funny story. I actually had a bit of an issue with uh, with uh, the Homeland Security whenever we went to England here a while uh-huh. back. Like I even I even got put into like the roped area and I'm like, oh, this is the perfect way to start this trip. <laughs> Wait, what happened? What happened? A rope there? Um. Well, well, we were over there visiting friends, or whatever, and like they were very, like they were just riding my ass about this. They're like, "Oh, do you have like their phone number and everything?" And like they had a, I had to give them my phone so they could call them. I had to wait in this uh, roped-in area for like thirty minutes to an hour or so, and oh, it was just terrible. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know what it is over there. Maybe because it's an island, and they're afraid there's just not enough room for everyone. And you put three more people on, people are going to start falling off the island. I have no idea. But whatever it is, I, re- I got the exact same thing. Exact same thing. I was talking to the really? guy. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and he was like, he didn't ask me for a number. I told him, I was like, you know, I'm just visiting a friend. I, the problem is like, I, I was like not as descriptive as I could have been. So I was like, I'm just visiting a friend. So I was like, yeah, I know. He, like, he goes to school in Alcon. I, I didn't know. I don't think he did. But like, I was just trying to give him as much information as possible. So I might have been, like, lying here or there, white lies, stressing the truth a little bit, just to, like, make it seem like, no, this is a normal thing. This is, I'm not crazy. But yeah, totally was, not sketchy at all. Yeah. But what was sketchy was, so I, I get into this um, this area where there's a bunch of cabs, and I, I'm like, you know, because I got off the train, and I was in the cab place or whatever, and there was a bunch of, you know, normal-looking cabs, you know, normal for England. And then there was this one that, like, was could not have been less normal anywhere. It was, and this is like right around the time of 9-11. Uh, no, that's not true. This is this is like five years after the six years. Wait, no, 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 no. It's tw- 2014. What am I talking about? Jesus, I'm thinking it's 2007. I don't think that's anywhere near 9-11. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. I, why did I think that? Oh, because I had a friend that went over. His last tour was in Afghanistan, and he came back around that time. So we were still culturally sensitive to it. So like, but like I wasn't. I, I always, I've taken people like, person to person to person i'm so sick of the macro dialogue oh man we could talk for days about that but um i like i i saw these guys and they were basically like you know they, they were muslim they were of the muslim faith i think one of them had um oh what the hell was it a signifier uh, something i just know they were from the middle east um and the guy had like a life vest on and he had a i want to say it's a hashish. I used to know the word for it. I'm sorry. He had like the robe dress on that you would have and like the turban, something very Middle Eastern. And I was like, you know what? This guy and, and, and his but the problem was his his van. His van was very sketchy. Like if, if I was in that business, he had like steel caged bars. It was not nice and upkept. And it was like open and big, not inviting. And to an American, those are like huge red flags. Did, but you know did what? Did it have a free candy sign on the side of it? <laughs> See, that's the pro. Yeah, that was that was more or less the the quality of like the car. It was very sketchy. But I was like, you know what? This will be a great story. I got in. It was fine. So I think the moral of that story is like, be overly trusting of people who might be able to kill you. No. <laughs> Don't just, judge a book by its cover. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He was great. We had a great talk. But, like, you know, there was that moment where I was suddenly like, oh, my God. Like, I am this guy that takes these risks. I never thought I was that guy. I was always, like, you know, very calm. We'd, we'd sit at home and, like, you know, do absolutely nothing. You know, just play games. It's fine. It's fine. Then I, I couldn't believe I was that guy. It was really a, a rush at first. And then I was like, oh, he's just a human. Oh, most people are just humans. So there's a nice little human story for you there <laughs> what the hell was the See, that, is a, that is a very interesting story i absolutely love hearing <laughs> stories just you know what happens with people's lives and everything it's it's very interesting but we yeah. were talking about um your your trip over there to alcon and what uh, what i was wondering is actually what we were talking about um i got lost off track oh, there I, for I, a I second remember. <laughs> i remember it. No, it where did the luffy voice come from right yes yeah um i don't i forgot no <laughs> Oh God, where did it come from? I, I, I was man. thinking you said in the video like it came from a movie reference or something. Like, cause like you were saying how 
Luffy looks like this sadistic killer or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. So, so it's not a movie. I was staring at the because you know, and this brings it back to editing. When you're editing, you stare at that screen and, and that character for days, freaking days, man. And, <laughs> and like literally, as you're doing lip flaps. The way I do it anyway is I cut and paste. There's multiple ways you can do it. But you, you get the three frames. Um, and then, like, you know, anime is, anime is the easiest to parody because there's usually just all the way open mouth, slightly open mouth, closed mouth. Um, yeah, just I, think very- that, I think they do that because they, they make the lip flaps because they know other people are going to be, you know, messing with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's easier. And it's cheap. It's not cheap, but it's, like, it's the quickest way to do it and everyone is responding to it. So, you know, why broke what's not? I mean, why fix what isn't broke? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I just remember looking at that character and thinking, the only, the only thing you could... I like doing this. I like taking a look at a character. I was thinking about this today. That's so weird. I like looking at a character and thinking, this is the way they portray him. But the way he's drawn and designed he could actually kind of, if, if you squint really hard and like look at it from a different light, he could kind of be seen as this guy. And, and, and then you just go with what works. I remember thinking about that, about another person in Code Geass. There was this, um, this, this, oh, what the hell was this regal girl with like purple hair. And I was like, she looks very regal and very royal. And like, you know, she's supposed to, and she's a bit of a badass. But I was like, she could also be like mistaken for like a Southern Belle, the way they got her drawn. So I don't know. I just remember thinking Luffy, in his instance, he's always smiling. No matter what, he's smiling when it's not appropriate. But like, even in scenes when he's like, you know, delivering dialogue, he'll smile. And what he's, what he's really saying in the show, in the real show, is he's smiling because um, he's getting past something or he's like overcome. He, know, he knows some righteous things about to happen. And he like just says the the at the blank state the what's the word I'm looking for? He says the most right thing at the moment, but he puts it in a very dumb, simple way so everyone can identify with it. You know, like it's those things you forget when you're going through life. It's like you know, um, be kind to your friends. So like Luffy will punch someone and he'll smile and be like, be kind to your friends. You know, like that's why I'm doing this. But like he's doing the act of punching someone, so it's wrong. But you, but he's got a justified reason. So, and he does that with a smirk or a smile. But that can also be seen as like a crazy person's version. If if you change enough stuff about him, you can have him so that he's just happy all the time. But he's not supposed to be happy. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm kind of like in the uh, very first episode of the Abridged series where he kills the uh, the the two people, and he's like, I don't want to go back to prison. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I just picture him as like pent up because this is this is like a uh, something that. I haven't explicitly said, but I picture that character as this is going to get horrible. How dirty can we get on this show? I can. Keep oh, you can get as you can get so dirty, man. Believe oh, me, you're God. you're fine with anything. Oh, fucking wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I picture that character as being pent up with all this rage from not being able to, you know, get get his rocks off. Essentially, <laughs> like he's made of rubber, so his dick's got to be made of rubber. How does that? How does that work? Does he just, does he got to deal with that testosterone all day, every day? I feel like after a while, if he was like 40, it would just be in his body, like corroding his bones. You know, (laughs) like, oh God, I hate everything. Like, get out of me. Ah!" So so it kind of works in that sense. It's really messed up and really weird. And like, it's totally unrelatable to, I'm sure like a lot of people, they're like, what? I don't see it. I don't get it. Especially like, uh, females probably won't even get it at all. You know, like, what? Why is he always mad? It makes no sense. I'm telling you, if you had that much testosterone for that long built up in your body, you would become this sadistic... Si- and the only, like, way you can get rid of it is with violence and anger. That's what he's going to be. He's going to be crazy. <laughs> I don't know. That was that was my take on it. <laughs> I, I, I got to go off track again for a minute. I sure. don't know why, but whenever you were talking about that, and I swear to God, if anyone writes a fan fiction about it, actually, it's probably too late. It's already happened. <laughs> I just picture a, a freak, a fucking Nami X Luffy sex scene. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That could, uh, well, that's that's the thing, though. He can pleasure any woman he wants, but it'll all be for naught. Because, like, how is he going to 
like you know get enough blood down there I, I, <laughs> i'm way overthinking this now it's getting gross but you know what i mean that's how it works biologically if he's still like a human uh, i don't really know how gum gum works but uh yeah <laughs> if he's still human he's not gonna be able to get that release it's gonna be bad <laughs> oh uh, <man>. yeah <laughs> yeah but i'm glad know, we get, uh, i'm glad we devolved this quickly all right <laughs> talking about jerk off jokes <laughs> we go from we go from talking about voice acting to jerking off your rubber yeah by the welcome way welcome to real talk radio ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. One thing I got to mention, a side note, because you were talking about um, voice acting, and for anyone that's like looking to get in it, most people they get it, this question answered asked all the time. But I love answering it. Um, it's like, what mic do you use? What mic do you use? I recently got this way better mic, and, and this is the thing: Th those ones they bought, you can get at Best Buy. They're perfect if you're not a yeller. Are you talking like you're talking like a uh, what's it called? Snowball, those sort of mics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yours sounds great, by the way. You you were talking to me before this, and you were like, "Oh, I'm not sure, you know, if you, my quality." So I was like, "Are you kidding me? This sounds amazing. I can hear you Good. like perfect." Because what I use is a um, what's this called? This is a Audio Technica. Is what it is. Just one of those oh, um, hundred dollar microphones that you plug in USB. Oh, we got the exact same thing then. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, Bro, I, I would high five you right now if I could, but we're like a thousand miles away from each other. Now I'm sad. Um, <laughs> Mental high five. Yeah, I got the Audio Technica 2020 Plus. I remember it all. I did a lot of research before I got this sucker. Yeah, they make good stuff. They do. I've had this one for about a almost two years. Actually, no, over two years, and it's and it's uh helped me out a lot, but so you just mentioned how you use uh uh like the Audio Technica 2020. Which kind of leads me into another question that I want to ask you. What are some of the technologies, applications, that, like that sort of stuff that you use for editing oh, processing? Because I, I know that there's people out there listening who, I got a buddy of mine a while back who wanted to try to make a, a, a bridge thing for a class project. Yeah. And I know he was kind of asking what sort of technology would be the best to use for that sort of stuff. You know, that's a great question. And and by the way, I really love um, communication majors. My cousin who I roomed with, um, he was a communication major too. And like, I really appreciate what you guys have to do. <laughs> um, I'm only recently getting into it now, but I, because I'm excited about it, I can answer that question like really well. Um, so it depends on what you're going for. Some people would rather the shitty audio quality I personally, this is a personal thing. I love the shitty quality. I love it because there's something endearing about it. Like the, but again, like this isn't going to be, you know, mainstream. You're not going to have like a lot of people being like appreciating why the mic is bad, you know, because, because if you're trying to go for something that's specifically like, you know, kind of a fan dub version of a parody, like, you know, what if this parody was, a uh, um, seen through the eyes of like, you know, a person who's starting out, you can do that and you can do it well and you can do it well with poor audio equipment. Um, so like, you know, an Xbox mic would be hysterical for me if you get the, it's all situationally based, but here's the thing overall, if you're just talking about like the, the state of everyone's technology now, I would say definitely figure out your acoustics and figure out what, um, frequencies your microphone can handle now see this is going to bore a lot of people i don't want to go too crazy but this one the 2020 plus it's perfect for me because a it's pretty much adaptable you know you, you got one too um but b it yeah, i think the word is solenoid i'm still learning this stuff i swear to god c-a-l-a-n-o-i-d depending on what that I don't know what the word is called, depending on what that looks like, depending on what that waveform looks like is how it can digitally process your voice. So this one is really good range, really good range. It blocks out stuff from the back. Um, I have, man, maybe I should like send you a picture because I got this styrofoam. Um, this is the other thing too. You want to block out a lot of like background noise. I got a styrofoam uh, padded. I don't know what the hell you'd call it. Um, egg crate kind of thing and i got multiple ones of them too but just just a uh, oh my god see i could go everyone's like doesn't care about this right now i swear to god you'll put this up there and be like oh, no one gives a shit it's it's uh, interesting to me 
I mean, there's probably there honestly probably is people out there who are very who do care about that sort of stuff because I know people are wondering what's a good setup, and I've asked this question to a lot of people, but I'll just ask you. What's the what's the appropriate setup? Say like um like would you say like a closet that has styrofoam oh. or not styrofoam but the uh this this foam fabric I I forgot what it was called I drew a blank there for a second. No, that's fine. the excellent question because I was I was literally just about to go into that. Um, I found I was doing this thing where after I got this mic and after I got this foam stuff, I made I be- essentially built um like like its own encasing this box. Um, you, you know, but if, if you're going to do that, it's got to be perfect. And the problem was I was, um, supplementing it with like, um, like a towel that was basically the door or not a towel, like a blanket. I used a blanket to, in order to get in. It's really weird. It's really weird, but everything sounded muffled and echoey, even though that I had like sound crates because it was too close together. It doesn't matter how close these egg crates are. You're just trying to diffuse a sound wave. So right now my setup is, and this is interesting, people think you got to lock yourself in a closet or put your head under a, you know, the stairs and like, no, that, that's not the thing. What you want to do is get a big room or a decent sized room with good acoustics. So I'm in a room now, and this is, this is if you want to know like how to do what you're doing, this is very, this I think will be the best advice I ever give. Um, I got a bun- I got three posters. I got, you know, those poster boards you used to use in high school for like, you know, projects. Uh, yeah, you're talking like, are you talking about like the boards to where you use the uh, tacks and you would put papers up there and everything, like those kind of boards or? No, 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 like the trifold boards. Like it's, Oh, okay, it's, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, there, there's like two little wing things and then there's like the bigger thing in the middle. So what I did was I bought a bunch of these egg crate things about, um, they're cheap, you know, $30 for like 12 I got, I don't know, 24, 36. I got about 36. Um, and I just stapled them to the poster board. So now I, I'm in a, I live in an apartment with my fiance. Now I get to say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that's another story for another time. Uh, or maybe this time, maybe later. But um, New Year's, uh, fucking reposed. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to burden her with this kind of stuff. So I just, and this is perfect for most people's setups too. You you staple it to the poster board. This is actually her idea. When I was getting the egg crates, I was like, I think I can glue it. She's like, no, no, staple them. Um, It is kind of tough to like maintain them. Sometimes the staples come out, but whatever. Um, You know, just don't be too rough with them. And then put them around your room so that they absorb as much of the sound waves as possible so you don't get an echo. And once you do that, you're good to go. I also have like a little backup uh, egg crate thing that's directly behind the mic. So it, it's pretty good at stopping, you know, 90% of it. And then the rest of the stuff around the room, you just you use the poster board and you're good to go. Yeah. And I know whenever you do set up stuff around the room, uh, one of the areas of a room that does catch the most sound, uh, tends to be corners and everything. So I would imagine that's where you need to set up probably a good amount of the soundproof material. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Anything that is like a hard surface, like that can, you know, reflect. It's literally just picture you saying something. You can't see it, but like, you know, picture the air, if you will, just like bouncing off the walls. And that's the only thing you don't want. You don't want it it to go there and come back. If you do too much uh, DYI stuff, like I literally, the the last episode I did, I was listening to it and I recognized like it kind of, and I, well, the problem with the last episode I made was I was filming in different locations in different places at different times. And like, it was okay because I did it per character, but still like, you know, this character, I wrapped the microphone in a towel. And then this character, I like, you know, was just doing it normal. And then that, blah, 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 you get the idea. Um, but just have it consistent. Once you've, once you've started recording, just try and reproduce that recording as much as possible so it's consistent and it won't, you know, disrupt the viewer or, like, take people out of whatever you're trying to do. Hope yeah, because people yeah. people usually say whenever you do record stuff, it's good to do a take more than just once. In fact, do it anywhere from up to three or four different times. But since we do have a bit of an understanding of what the proper setup is and everything like that, I want to take a step back to the voice acting side of things. Mm. Throughout Nun Piece and Soul Whatever 
and Code Mint, you voice a lot of the characters, correct? Or I mean, like you good, you voice a good majority of them, right? Yeah, probably ninety five percent. And I know there's been some episodes uh, where you've had people like Noah King and Little Karibo all come on, and I just want to know what's it like getting to work with these different abridgers. <laughs> you know, it's fun. You just said Noah King, and that that is how you could say it. You could say now acting. That's the first time I've heard it. That <laughs> I was call her Noah King. <laughs> I just thought no. it's. I just I just thought it was pronounced Noah King. That's how I've heard everyone else say it. You no, know, that's that's probably how you say it. But she hasn't stopped me, and we're friends. I gotta ask. Her. <laughs> no, I, I think it is Noah because. I don't know if this is a secret or not. Uh, if it is, you could bleep. I don't know. Her last name is Nowak. She just put the ing on there. Um, <laughs> it's always great. It's always fun. It's funny you said that. I'm always trying to get new people. I'm always trying to get more people on. But I feel like I have this bad stigma about me. Everyone thinks I'm probably an asshole from the work itself. That they're like, I don't want to work with that guy. <laughs> oh, you seem like a cool guy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, I. I just. It's always been fun. And I. The one thing I always do is I. I try to do it a little differently. Probably not the best approach to do this, but like I'm like, listen, you do your own thing. That's why cameos are so hard for me. It's like, listen, you do your own thing, and I'm going to edit around you because I feel like I get the best. I'll give you the gist of what's going on, and then you do whatever you want because I just want it to flow from you. So if you come up with something in there, that's good. If you if you don't want to do that, we'll just stick to the you know whatever the words on the paper are. You say that, and we'll go. But um, for the most part, working with other bridgers has always been a blast. Always. No matter who it is, they're always nice, friendly, outgoing. Even even in like, you know, and they're understanding too, even under like bad circumstances. Like recently, I had to, uh, like I, I wanted to do this thing with these guys, but then I was like, um, uh, it, it was Jerry. Uh, <laughs> it, mm-hmm. was, it, was, it was one kids. It was no whack. That crew. I, but I, I couldn't. I was like, there's like no time. You know, my, I'm getting like pretty busy now, which sucks. I want to do more stuff. But like at the same time, I just don't have the energy. <laughs> I would imagine that was probably for a Pokemon thing. Uh, no, no, surprisingly not. And, you know, it, I'll let you know the second if it ever comes to see the light of day. It was not a Pokemon thing. It was this like original thing we were just like playing around with. And I was like, oh, my God, we should do this. And then I was like, you know what? <sighs> I've already got like way too much on my plate right now, so I couldn't. But if I could, oh man, I'll let you know. I'll tell you the second I know, I'll be like, that was the thing I was talking about before. <laughs> oh. Because what a lot of people, you know, don't realize is that you are bridgers. Yes, you do a bridge thing and make entertaining stuff. But what they don't realize is that you guys have lives as well to where certain things happen and you have to go do that. It's just kind of, you know, once you get o- once you get older, you have to sort of work around things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know there's other guys that can commit. They can really commit to like, you know, people who are better at managing their time than me. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 you know what? They, but you got to have a healthy like balance. And there are guys who have a healthy balance. Um, they, they just have done it differently than I have. I was brought in where, like, you know, I, I was taught a different way how to do things. So I'm always like, you got to do the hardest, most worst thing. I probably didn't need to chase down a job and being, you know, an, I want to say a nuclear engineer. That's not my t- a, t- a title. I didn't have to chase a job in nuclear <laughs> power. Okay. That's the one. I'm looking for. Wow. Tripped up on that. Um, I He's going to nuke us all. <laughs> yeah. I know. But I was like, you know what? This this is safe. This is safe. This is like, you know, I, I wasn't taking a risk in that regard. I was like, if I do this, this will be a good life. It'll be fine. And the irony of it was, it wasn't that safe. They're closing our plant. <laughs> in a couple of years, that shit's going down. <laughs> you know, these things happen. But um, yeah, I, I just... If I, if I had, like, thought about it better, I probably could have get, like, a part-time job and then maybe have, like, you know, worked my butt off to do um, this stuff full-time. But I don't know. I don't know if I, I still have the drive because every time I come home, I'm so tired. But I don't think that's because of um, every, anything I'm doing, like, a bridging-wise. I think that's just because I'm, like, working my butt off. and I'm like, oh, Yeah, geez. because, like, what you're doing throughout the day and everything just kind of... Yeah. It, it, wears, it wears you down a little bit. Now, I want to take a step back to whenever we were talking about the 
conventions and everything, say like in 2014, you went to Alcon. Yeah. Have you gone to any conventions since then? And if so, how has the con experience been? That's a great question. Oh, man. Um, I, it was 2016. I went to one in New York City. Um, and it was, it was great. I'm trying to remember it. But, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? There was three panels, and I was not ready for three. I was ready for one. By the time my panel came around, I was, I was so tired. I just remember, like, getting no sleep. And we hadn't sorted the rooms out right so I, I, I'm the guy that I'll sleep on the floor. That's my thing. I swear, like, you know, the, these cons will like set up and they'll be like, listen, you know, uh, we'd love for you to come, but like, there's, there's just like, you know, there's some costs. I was like, there's going to be no costs. You already have so-and-so going, I'm going to crash with them. Is that okay? Then they love it. Then they're like, oh yeah, sure. Absolutely. I, I try to take care as much of that as possible. Um, it is, it is nice though when, when they put you up because I'm starting to learn that, Maybe I shouldn't be sleeping on the floor and then doing three panels, like working my butt off. Cause at the end of the day, like I am just ragged and, um, <laughs> I really got to stop doing this. I, I probably shouldn't even say this. I always give out free stuff at those panels. Like I love doing that. I don't know why I just found junk like laying around my house. It's like, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to give it out. Um, Hey, anyone want a free lamp? Yeah, I know. yeah. I bought like a bunch of T-shirts, and I was just like giving them out for free. And we, it was, it was really fun because we had everyone do crazy stuff, I, just, just like whatever. I came up with a bunch of ideas that people could do, like you know, Pokemon Go would just come out. I was like, name like you know, fifty Pokemon right off the top of your head within blah 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 time frame. Go, and whoever could do that won something. You know, try to incentivize uh, actually doing what I'm asking them to do. And I remember, like, they shot me down. I was like, do you want to do the cinnamon challenge? Everyone. This is the only time where the audience has been more, like, I I've never seen this. They've been more practical and, like, smart about something than, than the host. Like, usually the host will say something stupid and everyone's like, yeah! Everyone's on board. They're like, I don't know, man. That's, uh, people have gotten hurt from that. I was like, oh, really? And then, like, the whole crowd was like, yeah, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> like oh well thank you it was a great exchange too it's like yeah that's a good idea we shouldn't do this someone could choke and go to the hospital and then i'm liable that's horrible or throw up yeah <laughs> i don't know i i want to know who came up with the idea of the cinnamon challenge because i can just imagine people being at a convention being like oh well this uh this abridger guy told me to do it <laughs> <laughs> uh, that guy must have literally just been sitting there one day and be like, I wonder if I could put this all in my mouth at once. Like that had to have been the scenario. Like what other scenario is you run? Is he running into like a bunch of cinnamon? And he's like, maybe he's a cinnamon taste tester. And he just got too much on a spoon one day. And then he's like, oh my God, this is horrible. This should be a thing. And then just maybe went he just works for cinnamon toast crunch or something like that. <laughs> oh, maybe. Now I'm hungry. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the convention scene has been, is everyone's been great. They've usually been really helpful. Um, I, I've talked with like all, I've talked to only recently at that, like one, have I talked to the guys that actually run the entire thing. And I got like a sense for how it, how it operates on the levels that no one even sees. You know, like if you go to those things, you're just seeing people run around, like going left to right, and like you know, they're they're helping you here, helping they're there. But what I like doing, playing and everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it, it's supposed to be for the guests, you know, the people that are coming in. But what I like doing is I like, you know, I don't know what this is about me. I like like trying to figure out the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm like, I'm always asking because they usually have people who, um, they call them handlers. I usually, I, I'm usually tell if they ever try and give me a handler, I'm like, I don't need a handler. Just tell me where to be. Sometimes I do. Sometimes it's big enough, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know where to go. Like, like please, can you just? I need like a, a guide, a guide to get me to my. Um, uh, you know, the room I need to be in at whatever time. But um, I always like asking them why they're there, what they're doing, and then kind of like making it about them. Because honestly, it, that's what it should be. Like recently, there was this person who was just um, going to school in New York City, and she volunteered for this. Like, like I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you're not – like I think they, they paid some guys and they didn't some other people. She was a volunteer – and it was, it was amazing to me that she was like, yeah, I just came up from, actually, she wasn't, she wasn't going to school in New York. She was like going to school in Puerto Rico. She's like, yeah, I just came up because I know this and I like this. 
and this is what I do. So I'll, I'll like go from country to country to country, just volunteering for these things and then getting in and just having like fun wherever. I was like, damn, what, what, how, why would you make that decision? You know, I don't know. It just baffles me. But yeah, the behind the scenes stuff is crazy. Yeah. Some of my favorite uh, panels to go to at conventions are, and I think everyone else is probably going to agree with me when I say this, I'm talking about the 18 plus panels. Have you ever gotten to do any of those? Yeah, I did my first one. That was at the 2016 one. That was at the Cinnamon Challenge thing. The only thing I do is curse, but I've heard it can get like a little rowdy uh, or you can do other stuff. (laughs) I I went to a couple last year where, and I believe this was at Tokyo and Tulsa. I saw where someone was trying to draw a Pokemon and I swear to God, it looked like a giant penis. (laughs) They usually come out that way. Yeah, 90% of them. Wobbuffet. That's the... <laughs> I can't believe that popped my brain. He's just a giant dick. Come on. <laughs> um, Oklahoma. Are you... Uh, am I not supposed to say where you're from? I don't know. No, you, you can say whatever, man. Oh, cool. I'm from New York. Uh, <laughs> um, do you guys... Have you been to ones around there? Cons? Uh, yes. In fact, we're, I'm fixing to go to one next month, uh, NACACON, which is up in the Kansas City area. Nice. And then I know Wichita, Kansas has one, uh, Akon, or not Akon, sorry, Akon's down in Dallas. What am I talking about? Yeah. Anime Fest Wichita, which is in July, and then like the week after that's Tokyo and Tulsa. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to ask you is, are you interested, would you ever be interested in, in uh, people uh, putting a word in about you to maybe get you to go into these other cons? I mean, yeah, absolutely. All the time. I'm, I'm always up for that one. That's how you get those people there, too. That's what people don't realize. You go on the forums, you go on the website, and you, you ask them. You're like, I want to see this person. I want to see that person. And if you're active about it, and you know you're going, and you want to see that person, generally, that's how they go there. So, like, if you want to see the Green Ranger, just keep pestering them, and they will take it into consideration. You might not think that no one's seeing it, because they don't specifically say that. But they go, they roll it up. This is what I'm talking about, behind the scenes stuff. They roll up, you know, like all their um, requests on their like form and website, and then they see who's available, and then they ask people. So yeah, absolutely, I would be fine with whatever. Because um, what I was thinking, uh-huh. I'm seriously thinking about submitting a thing to Tokyo and Tulsa, saying, "Hey, check out Purple Eyes WTF. He's an abridger." He's made some funny content. He's a great guy. I'm sure you would love to have him because I would go to that in a heartbeat, dude. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course. And then I'd have to figure out all that stuff. Like, you know, my job is a little crazy right now. But yeah, in a little bit. <laughs> Maybe it won't be so much. Um, oh, just wait, wait, quick side note. Um, are you guys, you ever heard of uh, GDQ, Games Done Quick? I think it's in Oklahoma. Oh, no. You I'm, know what? I don't think I've heard of them. Yeah, you know, it's not. I'm sorry. It's north of you guys. Never mind. It's, it sounds <laughs> familiar, but no, I, I, have not, I have not heard about them. What oh. I wanna, another question I want to ask you as, as we're talking about conventions and everything. Have uh-huh. you ever gotten the opportunity to meet some of the big voice actors, say like people who work for Funimation or who worked for Four Kids in the past or Viz Media, whatever? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I remember sitting in between a panel. That's what I felt like really out of place of um, – the guy that voices, he voices a bunch of stuff. You, you got to forgive me. I'm not too good. Is it Vic Mignogna? No, it wasn't Vic Mignogna. It was the guy that voiced Greed in um, Full Metal Alchemist. And he, just, he did a bunch of other stuff too. I really am not doing him justice here. But uh, he was cool. But also the guy that does Dr. Robotnik. Um, in like everything now. I, I forget what his name is. Oh, like, I know who you're talking about. Holic, oh, God. Holic? Yeah, Mike no. Pollock, yeah. Is it? Maybe. Maybe it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he Mike was, Pollock. Yeah, he was great. Oh, he was a blast. Man, just, <laughs> I know that, yeah, that's little, probably... A uh, little bit of a side note. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, no, I, I, I got to say this. Mike Pollock is honestly probably my favorite Dr. Eggman voice because he's been doing... Goodness, he's been doing it for nearly 13 years now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And he's a down-to-earth guy. Like, you know, I just saw him walking around with his wife and, and they, like, he had, they had their kid and they were just showing him her she was like having a blast oh just it was was great um yeah most of the people are really good like that as far as i don't know other guys i really i'm drawing a blank right now but i'm sure i've seen them 
I've been in a room probably drunk, <laughs> and they've they've been there. I know the the director of Pokemon was was in a room with me, and, and, and like we were talking for a little bit. I just I couldn't remember for the life of me what was said or what was going. On. <laughs> I couldn't handle my booze then. No, I I just it's been so long. I literally cannot remember. I think that's pretty cool though that you got to sit in the uh, same room <laughs> as the person who helped make a lot of the Pokemon stuff. Honestly, if that were to happen to me, I would be submitting some uh, Pokemon ideas to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. They're just down to earth, and they're just people. They're just people at the end of the day, and they have to work within the system. So, like, ultimately, I just treat them like people, and I, and I never try to bother them, you know? they probably I try to think about what they've heard way too much of, and I'm like, all right, don't say that. You know, like, don't say, oh, my God, like, I love, you know, your... No, they they like hearing that. Don't that's that's wrong. That's stupid of me to say. You know, like you should always be like, oh my god, I love hearing your blah blah blah. Like that was really good and inspirational. That's fine. It's when you say the thing like, um, I don't know. I was I was talking about I was talking about this with a friend of mine. Is like if you say like the the thing you probably think they've always heard. And you say it like multiple times, they'll probably just like roll their eyes and groan. You know what I mean? Like asking, here's a good example. Asking the guy that voices Vegeta to say it's over 9,000. when Chris like Sabat. He, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Sabat. Asking him to do that at this point in the game, probably early on, great, great publicity. And he probably is still such a great guy. He'll love it. But like he wasn't even the original guy to say that. So he's probably like at this point being like, oh, when does it end? You know, the, the reason that got popular was because the other people that, that dubbed it had done it. And then they, they redid everything. They did, redid that line, you know, and he's got to still say it to this day. <laughs> and that's where I do feel sorry for a lot of uh, voice actors who have these popular lines. Yeah. You know, they probably have to say that at every single convention. <laughs> Just like, you know, anyone who's voiced uh, on Dragon Ball or something, they probably have to do the Kamehameha every single time. Which yep, I remember... Yep. Um, I remember back in summer, whenever we saw Kyle Hebert, which uh, uh, oh, that's yeah, like one yeah. of the things that they did at the very end was uh, <laughs> the Kamehameha, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've hung out with him, too. I completely forgot about Kyle Hebert. Yeah, he was at Avalon, really? as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah um, was... Actually, believe it or not, uh, he's one of the people we've interviewed on here before. Oh, cool. Yeah, he is great. Great guy. Just really, uh, again, like, I, I, there's something about voice actors where they're grounded because it's not so much... I, I I don't know. There, there's not as much whizzing around. I, I, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure where they're going. Maybe it's just my general take on things. But yeah, he was great. Um, damn it, I can't remember. There was something specific about meeting him that was cool. Oh, anyway, you're right though. They they do have to say um, their 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 stuff over and over. But I love that stuff. You can ask me to say it, and I'll say it a million friggin' times. I don't care. <laughs> In fact, I'll be honest with you. I think, I think uh, Chris Sabat has said some better "It's Over 9000s on YouTube than <laughs> what was actually in the dub. That's just my <laughs> personal opinion. But has that ever has that ever happened to you with any lines whatsoever that you've had to say over and over again at a convention? Uh, I've been asked, but it it hasn't worn me down. I've never been to the point where I'm like, you know, like, oh damn, I have to do this again. I, I'm not there yet. Maybe maybe in ten years. No, <laughs> but um, if, if I'm even doing it in ten years, I don't know. I, I I like doing it. No, I have been asked for specific stuff before, again and again and again. Um, the only thing that's tough is when people ask you for like a whole paragraph, and you're like, oh man, I don't remember that. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like uh, it's like Luffy or or Death the Kid. Read us a uh, read us a Star Wars quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Read us this whole passage from like this movie, and you're like, oh. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, whatever. Ah, it's fun. I love it. <laughs> but it definitely does sound like uh, working at conventions is a is a very is a very fun thing to go out and do. Now, I know we were talking about a minute ago if you've ever gotten to actually see or meet any of these um, people who've worked for, say, like Funimation or anything. Have you ever or have you ever had the opportunity to? get to work with them any or no oh, that's a good question probably not no okay um I'm, I'm mostly an internet guy you know there have been instances where um 
I'm just like on an emailing list and I've auditioned for stuff, which is nice. It's always good. Um, you don't know about that stuff. Like even now I wouldn't know it could be, take like six months before you hear something back. Um, I, I don't, there, there have been some indie stuff that I've, that I've worked with, but as far as specifically the guys that do anime, I don't think so. I don't think I've done anything. I'm trying to think. No, it, it's, it's mainly like, you know, a hobby for me, but if it's convenient and I've got like the right, whatever they're looking for, then I can send them like a quick, yeah, yeah. Or like a one line or a two line. Cause people like that. That's easy. That's cheap. And that's, I'm usually pretty cheap. <laughs> I generally be like, why are you paying me? Don't, don't do that. Just like, but now I'm starting to realize the value in it and seeing why people do it. But, um, I don't think I've ever, you know, uh, had had to be in like that there if you're talking about specifically funimation they have a texas studio and i have yet to fly down there i'd love to see it i'd love to walk around there i'm sure they'd let me but um i'm mainly in new york and you know with everything that's going on i mean i just got married my girlfriend might be pretty upset if i was just like hey i want to go see you know i want to go walk around uh funimation's office studios in texas okay bye <laughs> maybe when things settle but right now oh I don't think that's I can do it right now. Unfortunately, it's too bad. Oh man! Now, whenever whenever four kids was around, because they were located up in the, the New York area. Yes. Did yeah, you yeah. ever get the opportunity to go see their place, or yes, is it just actually, like a busy area to where you, you weren't able to, or? Yeah, I don't know if I can like am I allowed to say names? I don't know. Um, yeah, we had a actually. I, I know I'm allowed to say this. So I, I have a buddy. I consider him a buddy. Oh. I love him to death. I, I don't even talk to him too much anymore, which is a shame. Uh, there, there's just so many people, you know. Uh, but uh, we walked around the city with him. His name was – his online – his real name is Anthony. And I can say that because his online screen name is Ant Fish. So um, he was going to go voice for something – just like – just a line in Pokemon. I forget who he was. It's, it was – my memory is getting so bad. I think it was like two years ago too. He came to the city. We had a great time. It was um, me, my girlfriend, him, uh, no whacking or or no king. Yeah. Uh, Someone please tell us how that's pronounced. Is it no king yeah. or no whacking? This is the <laughs> ultimate answer. We must know, everyone. Someone please, for the love of God, tell us. It's bothering me, but the person we should probably ask is her, because <laughs> other people telling us how her name is pronounced is probably not going to help. <laughs> There's going to be a giant debate at the... I'm going to have to go to her and be like, no, listen, I'm sorry. It's been settled. Your name is not Noacking. It's No King. <laughs> sorry about that. I just... <laughs> that's the internet has decided that's what it is now. Um, yeah, but we. I think we saw the studios. I think we walked by. I don't know if we went inside because we went to a bunch of places that day. Um, but I, I know what the building looks like. I can picture the outside of the building. Yeah, that was fun. I don't. I don't think I went in there. Because what I from what I what I've heard about the uh, Four Kids Studio is, yeah, it kind of you know they did the thing with One Piece, which <laughs> I found myself listening to voice clips from the Four Kids dub, and I I won my ears felt like they were bleeding. But I've heard people say whenever you walk in, it's kind of cool how they had like the trophies they won from doing Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh and everything, <laughs> which is kind of which is kind of an interesting tale of Lightning Can Strike twice. <laughs> yeah you know it's funny you said that i have this romanticized version of their dub so this this is so funny to me and i'm gonna get i'm gonna get crucified for this but um i appreciate that i was a kid when i first saw it and i only saw like you know two or three episodes of one piece and i remember loving it but i know this to be true now it's because i was a kid and I, I, have, I don't have that barometer of quality. You know, I'm small, I'm young. I, like, I just, I, it was just all fantastic to me. And I haven't really gone back to listen to those voices. So I have no idea how they would be. A lot of people tell me, like, you know, oh, you're not going to love it. And like, I, I'm like, I don't know, I kind of love it now. And like, maybe I won't then. But because I have that in my brain, I just leave it there. I don't know Going why. back and listening listening to uh, Jason Griffith, I think is his name, doing yeah. the voice of Usopp was actually kind of funny because it's like, who saw his voice by Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> really? I had no idea. Luffy, we gotta go fast. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should revisit them. I, and, and I've gotten shit for this too before, being like, because 
I like defending stuff that shouldn't be defended. <laughs> no, it's fucking great. It's the best. It's wonderful. I do this because I have a friend that does stuff that objectively, like you got to stop defending the super friends in the eighties. You know what I mean? Like the, it's done. It's over with. It's moved on. Like the, the, the quality of the, the mics alone is shitty enough to be like, this is not good. But for some reason he has such a love for it that he'll defend it to this day. And I never understand that. He's, oh, he's a great guy. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just all about how you're introduced to stuff, honestly. And, and what's going on, like, main, in the mainstream cultural dialogue of the day that dictates kind of how you see this as being cool or bad or annoying or great. Because if you told me Sonic voice Usab, I'd be like, I'm on board. I'm on board today. Let's do this. Let's watch this sucker. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. Other people would be like, oh, man, Sonic shouldn't sound like Usab or vice versa. I, so I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny how you mentioned you were young whenever you first saw One Piece. I was the exact same age. I was about 10 or 12. And I'm like, oh, this is yeah. a goofy kid show where this kid uh, ate a fruit and now he has this weird ability to stretch out his arms. Then you learn about the whole editing process and find out what it's really about. And now I'm like 400 episodes in. This thing, this one piece is addicting us crack, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. And if it's been going for that long, there's got to be something to it. There's a lot more. I, I'm I'm learning more about it now and appreciating it more um, because it's just such a good example as – of what you can do with a story and how you can like kind of further characters. Like I'm, I'm not that, I'm not good at that. Like that's not my expertise like right now. I'd love to get good at it. And I'm always looking to, you know, expand in my knowledge. Um, and, and using that as a template is really good because he kind of, it, it's an adventure. It feels like an adventure. Stylistically. I know it's a lot like, you know, Dragon Ball. But Dragon Ball is, is, is like this kind of self-contained thing that gets bigger as it goes. And I, I guess that's the same as One Piece. I guess they, they're so similar now that, like, <laughs> that they're almost playing off each other. But, um, yeah, th there's something about that storytelling and those characters and what they provide for people that are so interesting. I could go on for days, man. I could go on for days about who that character is and what that character is that like, I don't know if you want me to bore everyone to death here. <laughs> yeah. It, it, what's interesting about the uh, one piece story is how, of course they go to like these different islands and it's like, Oh my goodness. It's like 800 episodes. It's going to feel so long. But then you realize uh, how like the story progresses and everything and like how each Island is kind of like its own story yet. It somehow connects with other places. And it is just a, it's, it's, it's so, it's so cool how, how it works. And I absolutely love the, story writing in one piece and now the reason why i'm kind of mentioning one piece is because would you like to play a one piece trivia game real quick sure i'll probably be horrible at it but all right so what we're going to do real quick is we're actually going to take a quick break and when we get back we're going to be doing some one piece trivia it's all coming up next right here on real talk radio my name's monkey j lofi and you're listening to real talk radio Welcome back to Real Talk Radio this evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jake the Goodman, and with us this evening, we have been talking to Purple Eyes WTF. He is an abridger on YouTube. He's made projects such as None Piece, Soul Whatever, and also Code Mint. Now, we're fixing to play a little bit of One Piece trivia here in just a little bit, but something we were talking about during the break was some of our favorite moments throughout the uh, throughout the world of None Piece. And, you know, I was I was telling you this, Nick, earlier. Yeah. One of my favorite moments in, in None Piece, one of my favorite jokes, there's a lot of them, but I really like the episode um, Man in a Box. Man in a Box. I know we were talking about this a little bit offset. And, uh, tell them what you were fixing to say. Yeah, uh, so I was just gearing up to say, it's funny, th that's a polarizing episode, and I specifically remember making it bad. Differently is the word, because bad's not the right word. I've made bad on purpose before, but that one was going to be like, it's really just one joke. Like, it's one joke that kind of lays itself out. And the problem is, you won't get this on the internet anymore. Like, the way we consume stuff, it's so fast, it's so quick, that I was thinking, like, do people really have the attention span for this? Screw it, I'm going to do it, because it's the internet, and I have the freedom to do whatever right now, pretty much. Well, not ever, whatever, but, you know, mostly whatever. Um, so, there's this one joke at the end. Like, they're just, it's kind of messed up, and it's kind of, 
the reason I did this was because there's this movie, um, three millimeter, or is it 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter, geez, not 30 millimeter, Ugh. 30 millimeter starring Nicolas Cage. And I, I saw it and I didn't mean to see it. And when I saw it, I was like, this is horrible. I hate this. Can this be a joke? <laughs> like, um, it's about this guy who goes through horrible, like, like fake snuff films. He, he finds out that they're not real, but it's, it's a murder mystery and there's like a snuff film in it. And I didn't even know what that word meant, but I was like, can you make an episode so horrible and so bad that, what, what, what was the thing I, I said specifically when I went out there? Oh, I remember this. I said, um, this is going to be my worst episode. I wanted to specifically have a low bar. Like the, the, the one that if I look back and be like, this is bad. <laughs> Not bad in the sense it's like horrible because it's edited really well. And it's the, it's the one that if I look back and go, this was fun because I was learning something new and learning to do new things. But like, it's my Metal Gear Solid 2. It's too surreal and strange and offsetting and off-putting <laughs> that um that it stands out and as long as it stands out i'm happy so i i know what you mean. a lot of people do like that and appreciate it for that so you probably you I, i'm so glad that you like that one because <laughs> a lot of people were like ah eh, it's not my style some people did love it don't get me wrong I think what I really liked about that episode is all of the different editing techniques are used like you know there's scenes to where everything sort of slows down and then you have these scenes to where it's like a green screen background <laughs> and i i just thought it was I, I thought it was really neat and actually another thing that i absolutely loved about that episode because i i love a lot of the script writing that you guys do because i laugh at a lot of the stuff um the the where zoro was complaining about the narrator which I thought was pretty was pretty creative and funny in a sense. You know what's funny? That episode now, yeah, it's supposed to, it's an editor's episode. You know, they have these. There's some comedians that are comedians, comedians like people who like comedy and are into it will like certain comics just because they're all about you know the the, the comedy within comedy. I, I don't know how to describe it too well, but that was specifically like you know um, a it's more for the people who actually do that stuff and edit it. Like for people just watching the show, they've most people, young kids, they don't really know what goes on. They don't know like the editing. They just see the, what they see on the forefront and they, and they enjoy it for that. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when they see an episode like that, they're like, huh? Like, like what's that mean? What is he, why is he in another room where there's green stuff behind him? Like, you know, what does that mean? There's certain barriers to entry that, would be off putting to other guys that aren't you and me. And I like doing those episodes specifically for those people who'd be like, you know what? I do this. You'd get a kick out of it. And I'm glad you got a kick out of it. So there you go. <laughs> Some other things that I got a kick out of was a lot of the other jokes that you guys put in none piece. So like, uh, the episode where they meet Usopp and I think it's called Serb city. I believe is the name of his hometown. I like, <laughs> cause I I'm guessing that had something to do with this joke. To where Zoro's like, oh, well, I haven't paying attention for days. And then he's like, I want pancakes. I want pancakes. <laughs> so this kind of leads me to asking, how long, of a pro how long of a process does it take for you guys to say, come up with the scripts and sort of figure <laughs> out what joke's funny? Or do you guys just kind of, do you just kind of roll with it? You know, that's funny. It's, I switch it up every time. So it stays fresh and fun for me. Um, just because like, that's the fun part of the process for me. So both is the answer to that question. I've literally, there was literally, I didn't know it was called Syrup Village. And I think you're right. It's something like that. I had no idea. That was a happy coincidence because, um, I, I had made a joke earlier about Zoro liking Aunt Jemima. And then I was like, Oh, let's, let's do something where he just wants pancakes. And then he just really wants the pancakes because he wants a bottle of Aunt Jemima. And he just wants to look at Aunt Jemima and be like, Oh, you, you fucking dirty. Oh, I love you. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but, um, it just worked out perfectly. But there's another episode where I was like, I knew, um, Sanji always calls it a crap restaurant. Like it's a crap restaurant. It's a crap restaurant. And I specifically was like, I want to have like actual shit. I, I know it's horrible. I wanted to see how much I could get away with. I was like, let's put actual shit on the screen. People are going to hate that. I knew they were gonna, but I was like, let's do it anyway. Because that was part of kind of like the, I want to use the word chronology, but it was kind of a reference to 
what's going on in the actual show. Like, you know, there's like that loose tie in there. And I think about that. I think about the concept there and I'm like, Hey, you could play with this or like you could use this in this way. So, and, and a lot of abridging is like that. Cause, cause you got to change stuff. If you're, if you're doing the exact same thing, you're just doing a fan dub. Um, so if you switch it, <laughs> that's where we are now. Maybe you could consider all these just fan dubs, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the term abridged has evolved to the point where it's like, if you're doing this, it's a bridge. If you're doing that, it's it's fanda. That's so weird to me. I think we've but... gotten to the point where every single goddamn anime has an abridged series now. <laughs> yeah, and which which makes sense, and I appreciate that, and that's the thing. That's how I stay like level-headed about it, is I knew that people once... Um, I, I could tell you exactly like verbatim how this whole thing came about. When Martin... The guy, the first guy to coin the term abridged when he was doing his thing, he did it chronologically and he did it like pretty often enough to where it could gain notoriety. Some other people were doing it before him. I think there was a Gozar guy, SSJ Gozar, and there was a bunch of other people um, making dubs. But actually, he was pretty consistent, too. But it wasn't chronological. I, I just remember there was like different people doing different things. And his was chronological. His had a, a name to it. And at the same time, YouTube was getting more and more and more and more popular. So, like, he, because he had his foot in the door when he did, like, if he had done that at any other point, I, I think it would have been very different. I think, like, things would have happened differently. It wouldn't have evolved the same way. But when he did it, when he did, and it gained enough notoriety, that became the term because it was in the right place at the right time. So other people used the term... And then it just became its own genre, its own thing. And it's, it's very interesting to me to, like, think about that now. Because I like sort of documenting, like, how did we get here? <laughs> Where do we go from here? That kind of thing. But, yeah, I forgot what we were talking about. We were, <laughs> we were talking about sort of, uh, like, writing in jokes and, like, all that sort of stuff. Oh, throughout yeah. A, throughout the Abridged series, which you were saying how... You know, it kind of switches back and forth. Like, like some of the times she'll be, you'll write the stuff out, and like some of the other times she'll just kind of shoot the shift with it and yeah. um, and everything. And I know we talked about editing a long time uh, back earlier tonight. What yeah. I was actually going to say was, I imagine whenever you're editing one episode of an abridged series, you probably got to go through at least uh, probably three or four different episodes of the anime just to figure out like what you're going to cut out and everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think. I think everyone kind of does this. You, you kind of see what you can use and what you can't use. What are like the major um, scenes? What f footage you have available? You got to watch it like, like over and over and over again. It's funny. You told me you were, were like, you know, you'd seen a lot of One Piece. I've probably only seen the first half of it. Like, but I've seen the first half of it multiple times. You know what I mean? To the point where yeah. like, I could probably picture uh, that, that, um, no, uh, what was what was the the uh, arc? Whatever the, the the buggy arc. Maybe not the buggy arc because I really wasn't too concerned with editing then. But like past that arc, I've probably seen those arcs like multiple times up to where I'm at now, where I could tell you, you know, like oh, there's there's a scene where they have like a low panning shot of the um, uh, and it's an establishing shot of like you know the the Baradier, the, the that that ship that they were cooking on and you could use that for this this and that like i could tell you that now because i go through way more thoroughly because the more you the more footage you have the more you can do i just it's sometimes it's too tedious for me <laughs> i wish i could do it back in the day but the problem with one piece is there's it, it goes from place to place to place to place to place to place to place like really quick so you if you're not up on where you are you kind of get lost in the minutia. So it's hard to do like a stream of consciousness sort of improv improvisation with it. But I bet you you could. I'm sorry, my dog's what yelping in the background here. Hey, it's the dog from episode... Uh, is that the dog from episode uh, <laughs> five or six or whatever? <laughs> sorry, my headphones got knocked off. What? I said, is that the dog from episode five or six whenever they landed on the island? Oh, yeah. No, oh, no. Sadly, it's her brother, and her brother passed away. Oh. Aww. Yeah. But no, um, I try to always get my animals in there somehow. <laughs> I have, I now have two cats, and her, uh, that dog that was in that episode that was interrupting me and barking, um, I've still got her sister now, and it's, it's great. Oh, I love her. 
Uh, maybe she'll bark and ruin this, and we can put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. I, I would love to keep the audio. <laughs> Holy shit! Hold on a second. There's a bunch of flashing lights right outside my uh, door. This this always drugs? happens. Are you, are you hiding drugs from the cop, dude? <laughs> I don't miss somebody is. Hold on. I'll Lay out some know. coke and call that the grand line. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me. <laughs> oh, I like that. Hold on. I gotta see. I gotta see this because if it's a fire, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta be making moves here. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh. Hold what on. is it? I don't want to. Get... What is it? I'm, I'm mobile now. Uh, I don't know. There's just a bunch of lights. Oh, what is that? That's apartment. outside his apartment building. No, oh my will god. Will he it... find out? And will his house catch on fire? Tune in next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> oh my god. There's there's someone in like a stretcher. Oh. This, this is really me. This is really uh, turning into something else recently. This always happens. I swear to God, every freaking time something like this happens. I'm sorry for popping the mic, but I'm not even looking. So, somebody must have collapsed and had a heart attack. Oh man, mm. that happened before. Actually, you know what? It's funny. Um, there was this uh, convention I was at, and the uh, TFS guys, the, the the guys that do Dragon Ball Z, they abridge that. Um, not just the guys. I'm sure there's multiple people. But but um, they're the ones I, I currently know. I've seen. Um, they, we, we were at this convention. And this is bringing it back to, you know, going to these conventions. Um, we got this convention. And I, I'm pretty good friends with the girl on their team. You know, one of the girls on their team. Um, the, the person who does their Bulma uh, impression. Um she I and name. I know who you're talking about. It's well, her her online handle. She uh, unfortunately, I think they got rid of her channel back in the day. It was Megami thirty three. Her real name's Corinne. Um, and she and me were watching this, uh, this show. It, it was a, it was a concert. They had a concert at one of these conventions. It was actually pretty cool. They were doing these. Oh, who the hell was playing? I know the Kinda headliner. Like a rape party. Uh, kind of, kind of. It, it wasn't that because there was actual seats. Like, it was weird. It was like a sit-down, like, I'm sure you could have, like, knocked the seats and started dancing. But um, it was the guy, that, the director of Pokemon w was doing a warm-up band. Or, like, he wasn't the headliner. Uh, not a warm-up. Whatever the hell you want to call it. He was doing his thing. And then they were opening for something giraffe. Steampunk giraffe. They were steampunk. I just remember that. Um, And we were sitting there, and they... And like Megami had texted them and they were coming down. I haven't seen, I, this is back in the day. So I hadn't seen them in like a, a, a while. And, um, I just remember somebody had passed out like, like same row. We were in the front row and somebody had passed out like six seats next to me. And, and I, I just remember like not even batting an eye. I'm like, Oh man. Like I, like I got up, I got, I got panicked, but I used to be a lifeguard back in the day. So I kind of know like, you know, the procedure, I kind of know somebody's already getting it. Someone's got to like, you know, call nine one one. I I know when it's at the stage where he's going to be okay. Like he'll probably be okay. So this person was seizing and like, you know, they made sure he wasn't biting his tongue. And I just remember being like so nonchalant because I, this has happened before uh, <laughs> to where they came in. And, and like, I remember them, I'd be like, Hey guys, what's going on? I was being way too nonchalant for them. So I remember like a couple of them like would look over. I think it was Scott, um, Nick. I don't know if, uh, Curtis was there. I think it was just Scott and Nick. Well, maybe Curtis was there, but, um, I remember like <laughs> the look on Nick and Scott's face is like, Hey, uh, what's this? <laughs> like, uh, what's going on? And like, I legitimately wasn't addressing. I was like, Hey guys, how you doing? I was like, Oh yeah, no, we just got here. We're watching blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, so, uh, yeah, why is there a body bag? Like two doors down here? What the hell's going on? <laughs> or a stretcher to not a body bag. No. <laughs> Uh, Luffy killed someone, fine. that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. I went mental. <laughs> just... How dare you kill someone at a convention, Luffy? Yeah. I mean, no. I, it, was, it was just a strange, surreal moment where I was just like, oh, yeah, no, I, I like, how are you guys doing, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, you uh, you know there's, like, a stretcher there. Like, uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> let's bring up a little dialogue of that, because they had just entered the room, so they had no idea what was going on. I saw let's, the uh, guy... Let's talk about stretching things out, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> eh, eh, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was that was a funny moment. <laughs> it's burned into my brain. I remember Nick. I, I just remember Nick was behind him, and like he kept like looking over. Like it, it was he was good to see him from, from like for, since so long. Like like I rarely get to talk to him, but he <laughs> he was clearly invested in what you probably should have been invested in, 
And I was just so like at that point in my life where I'm like, ah, I've seen a bunch of dead bodies. <laughs> I had so much lot. I was, I swear to God, this, a similar thing had happened when I was on chair as a lifeguard. There was a, an actual person that had drowned earlier. This is such a crazy story. Um, and like they, they called everyone down. But the thing is, I was just outside of the range. It's weird how it was set up. It was like basically like a lake. But we were sitting around it like in beach chairs. It's very strange. No, I'm sorry. Like those huge wooden chairs that you would see in like Baywatch. Um, and I was just outside the zone where if there's an emergency, I need to be the guy to make sure crowd control, basically make sure everyone's okay. Like, and, and it's not like, you know, there's not another person who's like in trouble. Like a oh, second person is starting drowning because generally when those things go off, there's an emergency and everyone runs to it. You kind of forget that like, you know, you still got to be watching other people. So this a similar thing had happened to like the 10th degree to the point where I was just like became no n- numb to that situation. It was strange. They pulled out this lifeless guy who had like been on drugs or something and just had gone in and drowned. And like they, they were doing CPR. They were, it was, it was intense. I remember like barely looking over that was like burned to my brain. But after that, like it was kind of been like, all right, so what else you got? <laughs> it's a horrible way to look at it, but yeah. You just got to do what you got to do in that moment. And if you can't help, then then step back and let the people who can do it because they will be able to do it. At least that's what you're right. Hoping. Yeah. Now, actually, one other thing I do want to talk to you about before we get into the One Piece trivia game. Oh, yes. I know quite a while back you actually got the opportunity to be in a Did You Know anime video. <laughs> and I just kind of want to know what's it like getting to do stuff like that? Uh, which one are you talking about? I did a Did You Know... And I did a, <laughs> I, I, my, I partnered with YouTube just because I was like, you know what, I'm going to need someone like, you know, to navigate this legal system. I'm okay, but I'm not great. I have a friend who's a lawyer, like, you know, it's, it's okay. I, I've known, I know of at least my family friend who's an entertainment lawyer, but I was like, it'll be a good move. And then they asked me to do a, um. A did you know for what the heck is it fairy tale originally they asked me to do one piece and they were like oh we got someone we signed them up i was like oh that's okay it's like ah fairy tale is pretty much the same thing <laughs> it's like it, it, uh, it pretty much is that, that that's a topic for another day yeah yeah so it's like okay yeah i'll do that uh <laughs> that one both of those i don't think i took seriously enough i going back i would be nice to actually take them seriously because I heard that I think the one you're talking about the, the literal did you know I went I went and I did this on purpose and it's probably shows in the editing I did it really fast because I did a bunch of jokes like as I'm doing it maybe maybe deprecating I don't know if it was self deprecating I don't know if it was stylistically deprecating like all these did you knows ha huh, whatever um but I would say something and then say something else kind of off color and I bet you anything, I think he, he edited them out. I don't, he, he oh, maybe he should have told me like, don't do this, <laughs> but he didn't tell me not to do it, which was the problem. <laughs> so I think it was abrupt. Like I, I did one take all through, but I did it quick. And I think he had to edit it to the point where I was saying stuff like, you know, like this isn't true. This is bullshit. <laughs> Even if it was true, J- just, to, like, just a mess. Ah, oh, it was, I feel I, looking back. I feel so sorry for that guy. Um, it was a fun experience, and if if anyone asks me, I will probably try to do it right from now on. Because <laughs> I did it, I did it wrong again. Um, I did this 106 facts thing, and they gave me 112 facts. <laughs> I just remember at like fact 107, I was like, "What the hell? Come on! You said 106." <laughs> I don't. Think Not 112. You lied to me, you son of a bitch. That's in the title. It's 106. <laughs> maybe they edit them. Maybe like, you know, maybe they like genuinely are like, look, these are the facts that we're going to go with. We just have a couple more just in case. You know, they they probably out. look at it like this, I'd imagine. They're probably looking at it like, okay, this is the 107 people would care about. And these are just some that probably people really, you know, don't really yeah. give a shit about. Them. Let's leave them there so they can spend more more three or four hours on the internet and I trying to find this sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I botched the names too. 
<laughs> I botched them all. <laughs> they told me I could. Them all. <laughs> yeah, they told me I could, but they shouldn't have said that. They shouldn't be like, ah, just make a joke like you don't know how to say it. And I was like, okay, but it's not a joke. I don't know how to say it. Oh, I need to but watch it, more stuff. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's interesting to kind of hear what it's like to get to be on other other projects like that. So yeah. now what we're going to be getting into is one piece trivia. And as I look through some of these questions, some of them. I really don't don't know myself, but are you ready for this? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> All right, question number one. Who is the mountain bandit that is responsible for taking care of Ace and Luffy when they were children? Is it Curly Dedan, Lola, Kami, Alvita, or Charlotte Linlin? I, a couple of those names I haven't heard yet, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, what was B, the second one? Lola. Who was the mountain bandit um, that took care of them? I think it was a woman. I know it's not Alvita. Let's go with Lola. Lola? All right. We'll go with uh, Lola on this. Uh, let me mark that. I'm going to get these. So on. the next question, <laughs> question number two, what is the name of the sword Zoro receives from Ryuma on Thriller Bark? Is it, I, I, I've, I've heard the name. Is it the Sundai Kietsu? The Meito, the Shu... I'm sorry, I'm so terrible when I pronounce Japanese. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> or the Wadu Ichim, Ichimonji, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> I want to say A, only because you said it so quickly. <laughs> you knew A? What that okay, we'll go with A. Okay. Um, This one I don't know. Who is a current member of the Shikibuka? Is it Marshall D. Teach, Gekko Moria, Trafalgar Law... Buggy or Jinbei? Traforia Law. I don't know. <laughs> I'm right, not we'll, go, we'll go with Law. Okay. See that. Question teach, number teach. four. No, no, Law. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. Question number four. Which of these pirates is not part of the 11 supernovas? Yeah, 11 supernovas, which okay. I won't give you the answer, but they're, they're just now talking about this sort of uh, where I'm at in the series. Okay. Is it X Drake, Killer, Porcus D. Ace, or Jewelry Bonnie? Uh, Porcus D. Ace. Porcus D. Ace. All right, we'll go with that. Uh, question number five. Which of these pirates is not a Yonko? Is it Kaido, Charlotte Linlin, Marshall D. Teach, Edward Newgate, or Red-Haired Shanks? I don't even understand this question. <laughs> I don't understand it either. Like, these yeah. people are asking... This 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 trivia is asking questions that are, like, very up-to-date. Like, you don't have to be... You have to be one that follows the show religiously to know these. Yeah, you you, you literally need a trivia question for that trivia question. Like, what's a <laughs> Lulin? <laughs> uh, oh, man. I'm just going to go with the last one because I have it. Right oh, teach, there, teach, because teach, I know who Teach is. There you go. Right, you want to go with Teach? Yeah, let's go with Teach. All right, we'll go with Marshall D. Teach. Yeah. Number six, which of these people do not possess Kinbun Shoku Haki? Haki, there we go, Haki. Uh, is it Rebecca, Virgo, Shura, Sanji, or Satori? Now, this this one I don't know either because I'm. This is another thing that they're just now starting to bring up. It's yeah. It's it's, but is it A Rebecca, B Virgo, C Shura, D Sanji, or E Satori? D Sanji. I don't think Sanji. He, I, yeah. Does he have any? Everybody who doesn't who doesn't love Sanji? I mean, <laughs> he's so nice to women and everything. <laughs> Poor guy gets rejected, but you know he's really nice. We should all, we should all take notes from from Sanji sometime. All right. Question number seven: Who created the Sun Pirates? Is it Fisher Tiger, uh, Hachin, Arlong, Jinbei, or Horty Jones? Sun Pirates. Well, it's not Arlong. Uh, Jones. Jones. Oh uh, yeah, because yeah. the uh, the Sun Pirates were. You know, fish were uh, like Arlong and all of his crew and everything. All right, question number eight. Where was Tony Tony Chopper born? Was it Drum Island, Torino Kingdom, Syrup Village, or Boyne Island? Ah, oh, born, huh? Um, Dr Drum Island? All right, we'll go with Drum Island. Question number nine. Who said a bond of... Im yeah, fucking... I can't, I can't talk to that. I'm sorry. I am, I am stumbling so bad. Who no. said a... Who said a bond of enmity is still a bond? Is it Trafalgar Law, Buggy, Tom, Goldie Roger, or Marshall Marshall D. Teach? 
Oh, man. Let's go with Buggy. <laughs> I'm going to botch them. <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> Everybody, everybody loves Buggy. You know, I'll, I, off topic, real quick. I yeah. swear to God, Buggy looks like a Wario villain. <laughs> I agree with that. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, number ten. What is Frankie's real name? Now you haven't. I don't think you've met Frankie yet, have you? I know who he is. I know he's uh, the blue-haired robot. Uh, he's only got like speedo on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What's his real so, name? So what is Frankie's real name? Is it A, Frankie is his real name, B, Iceberg, C, Pluton, or D, Cuddy Flam? Sounds like it could be Iceberg. You want to go with Iceberg? Are you sure? Yeah. Right, oh, we'll now you're saying. oh, now you're saying. Are you sure? Frankie's his real name. I don't know. <laughs> Number 11. Whose crew does Yasop join? The Red-Haired Pirates, the Heart Pirates, the Roger Pirates, the Straw Heart Pirates, or the Kid Pirates? The red hair. That I do know. Yes. Yeah. You really, <laughs> you know, he, you rarely ever hear about Yasop once you really get into the Grand Line. Like, you know. rarely ever hear about him. <laughs> Number like 12. <laughs> what is the card that Ace gives Luffy during the Alabasta arc? You may or may not know this. I don't know how far you are in Alabasta. Is it A, the Bible card, B, Life card, C, Calling card, or D, Beaver card? I'm going to say Calling card. I don't know. I'm not that far. All right, calling card. Number 13, who is the mayor of Windmill Village? Which I think Windmill Village was that first place they went to where they met Nami and Buggy and everything. Yeah, where yeah. Where Zoro had the six-foot-inch or the six-inch sandwich. All right, yeah, the it, guy was all stitched up, yeah. A, Lucky Roo, B, Ginzo, C, Yosaku, D, Rockstar, or E, Whoop Slap? Ginzo. Ginzo. Ginzo, yeah. <laughs> all right, number 14, how many times bigger is... Ors in a normal giant, which Ors, you haven't met him yet. You'll meet him when you get to Thriller Bark. He's he's a pretty good sized dude. Is he four times, eight times, ten times, six times, or two times the size of a normal giant? I now this I one know. I honestly don't remember. I I think I might know this because because I have like the app game I was playing. I think it's ten. Ten? Yeah. All right, I we'll go ten. Which, by yeah. the way, I think Thriller Bark is where Adult Swim is finishing up on uh, Toonami with One Piece at the moment. Number oh, 15, you. what animal is, Chop is Chopper usually mistaken for? A, a raccoon dog. <laughs> B, dual-horned rhino. C, reindeer. Or D, pochico. Uh, I want to say raccoon dog. <laughs> just because that's hysterical. <laughs> it's it, it, it's funny because you hear people call him that and... I just, I just love his reaction. Number yeah. 16, what filler arc was based on the storyline of a popular One Piece game? Ooh, this one I don't know. Is it A, Lovely Land arc, B, G8 arc, C, Warship Island arc, or D, Ocean's Dream arc? What was hmm. the first one? Lovely Land, which comes right before Thriller Bark. It's, it's between Thriller Bark and Any's Lobby. Yeah, I'm going to go with Any's Lobby, because I, I think Thriller Bark was wasn't i don't know okay number 17 when emporio ivankov healed luffy how many years of his life did he say he would lose a 15 b 10 c 14 d 9 or e 5 Ooh. i'm gonna go with b <laughs> all right i i i'm guessing that's a more recent thing like once they get onto the other side of the red line into the new world because i haven't yeah. heard jack shit about that yeah. number 18 what animal does lola zombie resemble which is another thriller bar question which fair warning <laughs> thriller yeah. bark's a good arc but it's it's kind of quirky it's kind of quirky with a lot of its stuff yeah. so what animal does lola zombie resemble a a hippo b a boar c an elephant or d a warthog I just want to point out that we just, I got to change another answer now because of this question. Clearly Lola the zombie wasn't the bandit that, right, they just ruined that question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, it's kind of like whenever you take an actual test, you're like, is two plus, does, does this equal that? And then you see like a problem that mentions that and it's like, son of a bitch, I answered that wrong. <laughs> so I'd like to change that answer to any other answer. Uh, all right, let me go back here. Well, I got to scroll all the way back up. God damn it. All right. Um, uh, where is this at? Uh, give, me, give me just a minute here. Give me just a minute. We're scrolling back up. We're finding it. We're finding it. This was question number... What is this? Question number one. Yeah, question number one. Who is the mountain bandit that is responsible for taking care of Ace and Luffy when they were children? So we're not going to go with Lola. Is it Curly, Dedan, Kami, Alvida, or Charlotte Linlin? Charlotte Linlin. 
All right, we'll go to Charlotte Lindlin. <laughs> I will tell you this. Uh, Kami is someone you'll meet whenever you get to Saba Odi. Um, number. Okay, so back to 18. What animal does Lola Zombie resemble? A, a hippo, B, a boar, C, an elephant, or D, a warthog? Uh, let's go warthog. All right. Number 19. Uh, we're reaching the end of this. Who was the first zone user to appear in the series? Was it A? I think, do you pronounce it Lucky or Lucy? I'm not sure. B, Kaku, C, Dalton, or D, Chopper? Zone okay. type, they mean like is able to uh, turn into uh, like like an animal or some other species. Oh, Chopper. Chopper. All right, we'll go with Chopper. And our final question, of the 11 supernovas who had the uh wow they didn't even like fit they didn't even start this off correctly it just says of the 11 supernovas oh never mind i read that wrong of the 11 supernovas who had the highest bounty was it a x drake b trafalgar law c monkey d luffy d rorno zoro or e eustace kid oh the, the highest starting bounty who has the highest bounty oh oh i'm gonna say eustace kid okay are you ready to see your results? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we are looking at this at the moment. Give me just a minute, and let's see how you did on this uh, particular One Piece quiz, which there was a lot of weird answers on here. <laughs> you have it. All right, your pirate dream is just starting. You have correctly answered seven of 20 questions. <laughs> on average, 5,821 of users who took this quiz gave uh, 11.85 right answers. How do you get 0.85? <laughs> All right. I don't know. Oh, that's and really bad. The results and everything? No, I guess I guess we don't we don't get to see them or anything. But um, that's a that's a one piece trivia quiz. I thought we would uh, like to play that with you for tonight's show. Now, before we do wrap up this interview slash uh, talk slash just throwing things around, yeah. I want to I just want to ask real quick: Where on social media can people go and check you out? Oh, uh youtube uh purple eyes wtf and i got my twitter which is violet eyes wtf <laughs> yeah real original there but um i think i also changed the the tag title name to purple eyes wtf so i'm sure you search either you'll find him <laughs> now do you have like a facebook page or anything oh or yeah, Instagram? yeah yeah i got the facebook i don't have the instagram facebook it's all purple eyes wtf pretty much they're pretty consistent Except for Twitter, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Mr. Purple Eyes, Nick, I would like to thank you for taking the opportunity to hop on tonight's show and do this really fun. I thought it was the greatest probably hour and a half talk that I have honestly ever had with anyone that I've talked to. Seriously. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> now, is there any last things you'd like to say, Luffy or Zoro or anyone? Do your fucking homework. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good idea. Stay in stool, kids. Don't do drugs. Stay in stool. Stay on Pulls the stool. Of- <laughs> You're drunk as hell. <laughs> Pulls out an entire line of pulls out an entire line of cocaine. Oh, I call this one the grand line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amen. <laughs> All right, well, guys, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Check out Nun Piece. Check out Soul Whatever. Check out Code Mint. And also check out his cat video. It's awesome. So what we're <laughs> going to be doing now, guys, is we're going to be taking a quick break, and we'll be right back with more on Real Talk Radio. <laughs> 